Okay, so next we will bring up our uh, round two board three. And Brandon, we're going to say goodbye to you. And we are going to welcome Adam. Adam, welcome back to the stream. Good to be here and very excited to cover this board, which is the kind of board when it's announced in person, everybody laughs and cheers and screams and thanks goodness they, they weren't on it, if, unless they, <laughs> except for those who are. <laughs> I cannot wait to watch this board. Uh, in Austria, we have Evan Swihart, England, Randy Lawrence Hurt, a frequent DBN commentator. Uh, France, we have Chris Brand, world champion and frequent DBN commentator. Germany, we have Jason Massbaum. Italy, Jackson Roberts. Russia, we have Adam Siegel. And in Turkey, we have Bill Hackenbrack, who runs the uh, Liberty Cup and has also been a commentator on DBN a few times. And I'll just point out, since we haven't seen him much on these broadcasts, um, Adam Siegel is really a world-class player. I don't think he has a world championship under his belt, but he's played on a lot of world top boards. He is just an outstanding, outstanding uh, player and always a pleasure to, um, to, to play with and to uh, have participate in these things. Absolutely. I've been playing with Adam for years and interesting tidbit, both Adam Siegel and Bill Hackenbrack were on the top board in 2018 together. Nice. I did not know that one. All right. So we'll go ahead and get to it um okay see. i'm gonna i'm gonna try my best with to get through this one in three minutes um <laughs> in a game in a game with such high caliber players as this one um we're gonna find that it's incredibly dynamic and there's a constant shifting of momentum and of power um unlike miss most of the other games we've seen. So let's just um, start from the top. And the really interesting thing at the beginning of this game is that German move to Tyroli, a really unusual, um, and he actually ends up there, which is also sort of fascinating and an interesting dilemma for, for the player. And so um, as we go into the fall, what's really um, interesting is that Italy foregoes um, Tunis in order to get that momentum moving into the Aegean. So clearly an agreed upon move to Trieste, the self, what we're, what's a sort of a pseudo self bounce in Vienna to make sure that Germany doesn't take it. Um, I, based on the move back to Munich, maybe Germany didn't expect to go there or is just covering themselves from France. So as we move forward into this, into uh, 1902 um, and into the fall, we see what's very clearly an AIR versus Turkey. And so Bill is going to get the short end of this and um, and be played for an early exit just uh, under insurmountable uh, efforts by the other players around him. In the West, it's really interesting because um, we're seeing, again, the beginnings of some dynamics with the French start making a move against Italy, while the Germans really are not, uh, sorry, the French making a move against England, uh, while the Germans are really more focused up against the uh, Russians in the North, but not really making progress there. Um, as this continues in spring 1903, this really turns into what looked like France attacking England into what is actually a pile-on against Germany. We can see that the English are going down into Denmark and Skag. Even the Austrians are trying for a piece of this by going into Bohemia and making a pot shot on Munich in the in the fall. Um, but what's really meaningful in this fall 1903 is that we actually can you go back. Uh, sorry, go back to fall 1903. I think what's really meaningful here is that we actually see. Uh, what looks like an Italian stab on the Austrian, and this is really going to um, going to have an impact on this game. And in fact, this may be developing into what is an uh, Italian-Russian alliance against Austria. So pushing ahead in through 1904 into early 1905, um, that's in fact what appears to be playing out here. Um, while the French are continuing to make a press against Germany with, with English help. Um, in 1905, we see the continuing IR, Italy uh, making, sorry, Italy making their move against Russia um, with the help of the remaining Austrian unit. And we see France now actually making their move against England, probably 
uh, knowing that the Ita- English army is getting convoyed away, so a free walk into to Liverpool come the fall. Um, this basically continues through the fall as we get into 1906. We're continuing to see um, Russians continuing to fight Italy, um, but Italy is starting to make a move west and really doesn't make that commitment against Russia, uh, really pushing their fleets in the opposite direction to get some play against France. This is going to let Adam and Russia really get some more play um, and and work with the Austrians to knock the Italians down. Um, you know, really making this a more dynamic game. And if you look at the center count at this point in the game, we had Italy up at 10 and we're really playing a game to knock Italy down so that other players have a chance in this. And so we can see Italy going from 10 down to nine. Now we're sort of seeing France and Russia both trying to make their play in this last game year um, to 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 uh, top the board. France really doesn't have any momentum or doesn't have the position to make to be successful against the English. In fact, the English are going to take Kiel off of France. Um, Russia is continuing to try to make some inroads against Italy in 1907. And then finally, the game is going to end uh, by force draw at the end of 1907. And I think that the final count, can you go forward for me, Brian? The final count does put Russia, Adam and Russia on top. Um, eking it out against the Italians um, and England, who was making a late push as well. So um, just a hugely dynamic game. And I think that this is a typical um, type of game for what I've seen from many games played with Adam Siegel, where he's really able to drive the momentum in his direction as the game goes on. Um, A really out of the gate, strong start for Italy and actually a reasonably strong finish for Italy as well, um, but unable to keep that momentum going as the tide sort of, you know, getting getting um, ahead in a game where there's a lot of balance, um, really about forcing that late game momentum was critical and Adam was really able to do that very effectively here. Yeah, absolutely. I think you hit most of the main points here. Um, You know, Adam Siegel is a top-notch player. We haven't seen his name around a lot lately um, because he's just been too busy with other things in life. And it's so great to see him back. Welcome back, Siegel. Um, Still hate playing on boards with you. We've been playing this game together since I was 14 years old, and there's a lot of animosity over those years. But the moment that I really want to stick on is in 1906 when Italy makes that stab. And Adam, you touched on this, is the lack of the commitment to it. And I don't know if that the, was- The first day was 19, oh, spring 1905, actually. If, was it 1905? Okay. Let's um, see 1905 really quick. I think that's what I have in my notes. Let's take a Yeah, break. okay. Actually, you're right. It is 1905. Yeah. So this moment where you stab, and sometimes people, players pull back because they make the stab and then they get nervous because someone is upset with them or whatever the situation is happening. Um, but Adam Siegel is masterful at coming to you and saying- hey, okay, you did this, but really there's more in the West for you. You should take that. You should go there. And I don't know if that's what happened here, but I really think that for Italy, if they had committed to it, they probably would have wound up with the board top. Yeah, and I'll also point out, look at the degree of equivocating. We have Rome to Naples and Tunis holds, right? Mm-hmm. So actually, the nothing is following up into the Ionian Sea, so you don't even have that option to be sending another fleet over to the Eastern Med to really shore up that position in Turkey right here, right? You're really not leaving yourself a lot of optionality for what to do. This is really saying, well, maybe I'm gonna send something against France or maybe I'm gonna continue going to the East. And um, I, I think that really that really hurts Jackson here. And I actually think that the decision to commit fleets um, West may have also been a mistake because um, it was not really going to be very productive. And and, and Chris really um, was not a terrible threat. And I can understand maybe not wanting to leave everything empty here, but a move for Rome to Tyranian, uh, Tunis to Ionian here, um, mm-hmm. even if Chris does drop into, the, you know, some of those, some of those nomads lands, well, you're not in any worse position to defend than you are from this in Naples and Tunis is the reality. I think you're in a better position to defend and you commit to the attack in the East, you know, and Jackson, we're saying a lot of this here. You were in a really, really difficult position here, definitely between a rock and a hard place with Chris Brand on one side and Adam Siegel on the other. And you're looking at that saying, I have to make a choice to attack one of these players. I don't like making that decision. And I've played with these players for a long time. 
Yeah. And I think the other option, the other option here would have been to just say, you know what, I'm just going to go West against Chris. And actually that may not have been a terrible choice either. If you look at Adam's moves, he was not particularly setting up to immediately do anything aggressive against Italy. I think in the long run, if Italy's sitting there with just some units hanging out in Trieste and Serbia, it's going to be hard for Adam not to take the temptation to take those. Um, but in the short term, I mean, that would have been an okay decision. But the equivocating, I think, is really what hurt Jackson here. Exactly. Absolutely love this game. This is the exact style that's my favorite to play. Uh, lots of back and forth, very dynamic. Uh, I think this is a good representation of what Brandon was speaking to early about you kind of need in a time limited game to have a good understanding of where you're going to end the game, how you're going to end it. And uh, Evan could have pushed this way or that way, uh, France or Russia. Uh, but by not committing to either, uh, ended up with this result. And shout out to Evan, where uh, he's at one center here. And uh, at the end of the game, we see him at, uh, I believe, four. Hands, hands, up, hands up to that. That's right. Yep. That Absolutely. was a fantastic result, and I was happy to see it. And, you know, a small shout out to Jason Massbaum, who had so, so many problems throughout so much of this game and managed to survive against Chris Brand and Randy Lawrence Hurt. So... I'll give you credit for that. Um, I think the real winner of this game may have been Bill Hackenbrecht in Turkey, just getting killed early and getting to go to sleep. Or all of us forgetting to watch a really fun game. <laughs>